our immune system is more powerful than we ever thought. So powerful, in fact, that if we had cancer, our immune system can wipe it out, even if the cancer is spread. So, you know, th this is coming from... Re we got to rebuild our blood vessels. We got to rebuild our hearts. You know, our hearts turn around. It's like we actually have um, stem cells in our hearts and our brains and regrow our nerves. Every single day, mm -hmm. something in our body is regenerating. Actually, a lot of things are yeah. regenerating. Our bodies possess an incredible ability to heal themselves, and the foods we consume play a crucial role in supporting this natural healing process. By incorporating certain foods into our diet, we can not only nourish our bodies, but also potentially prevent and even reverse disease. Well, stem cells are really simple. We're made of stem cells. So when our moms and dads got together and created, you know, us in the womb, we started out as stem cells. They actually made every single an egg and a sperm got together and they basically decided they would become a stem cell factory. And then pretty much we formed out of our own stem cells. And after we were born, a, a, a few of those stem cells um, stuck around, um, about 700,000 of them. They stick around and they're mostly in our bone marrow and they're in lining of our intestines. They hide out in our body and they help us regenerate. We know that we regenerate because our hair falls out and grows back. Our gut lining grows back. Our livers can grow back. If you actually remove part of your liver, it'll grow back. Um, our skin grows back, you know? Um, so we, our bodies possess the ability to regenerate through stem cells. Now, what can injure stem cells? You know, um, high doses of alcohol can damage and blunt your stem cells. So people who drink a lot have damaged stem cells. Diabetes is another state, a metabolic state that, you know, it really impairs, it cripples our stem cells. High blood sugar cripples our stem cells. So the excess of anything can be harmful, including to our stem cells. So what are the things that we can do to help boost our stem cells? This is where it's really become interesting. Stress can definitely affect our stem cells. High stress will blunt the activity of our stem cells. Mm. You know, it's just like stunning them. So they're like, wait a minute, what do I do now? You know, maybe I'm not going to be so enthusiastic in rebuilding our organs. We got to rebuild our blood vessels. We got to rebuild our hearts. You know, our hearts turn around. It's like we actually have um, stem cells in our hearts and our brains and regrow our nerves. Every single day, mm -hmm. something in our body is regenerating. Actually, a lot of things are regenerating. Yeah. So the Mediterranean diet, studied by Spain, looked at elderly people on the Mediterranean diet. And those who are on a Mediterranean diet compared to not on a Mediterranean diet had five times the number of stem cells in their circulation, in their bloodstream. Amazing. So again, it's not one magic food. It's the pattern of pattern. food that you're actually eating. Now, when you, you can actually do the research on specific things as well. So for example, tea, green tea will increase your stem cells, but guess what? So can black tea, right? So black tea can also double the number of stem cells. And then here's another kind of surprise and delight is that um, there was a study at, uh, by UCSF in San Francisco where researchers took people with known cardiovascular disease so they had kind of crappy blood flow and they gave them hot chocolate the darker the chocolate the higher the flavanols these are the bioactives that are naturally present in cacao um, every plant-based food will actually have some type of bioactive so in cacao which is a bean which then you process to actually get you know kind of the cocoa powder if you take the really dark chocolate like 73 percent cacao the really dark chocolate and you make it into a high flavanol hot chocolate drink and you have it twice a day. This was the clinical study. They found in people who wound up actually having, drinking the hot chocolate twice a day over the course of a month, they doubled the number of stem cells compared to the people who didn't drink hot chocolate, right? And so, okay, so the question is, is that important? Well, when they measured their blood flow, mm -hmm. what they did is they put a blood pressure cuff on them and which, you know, kind of like um, lowers the, uh, the circulation of the blood, they let it go. They found that the blood flow was much vastly improved. So here's the functional results that actually means it makes a difference. So who's gonna complain about chocolate? Who's gonna complain about tea? Who's gonna complain about a Mediterranean diet? I mean, you go out to eat, these are the things we love. There is some biotech or pharmaceutical company working on it to develop some drugs. I will tell you that mother nature has beat drug companies to the punch because there are tons of foods, more than 200 foods that are right about my book, Eat to Beat Disease that actually have the ability, a proven ability through science and research to activate our health defenses. So I'll dive into them and tell you about some of the foods. Well, it turns out there are more than a hundred different foods that have been studied. I've studied almost all of them that can enhance your body's ability to cut off the blood supply to that, are, that might be feeding cancer. So you keep your good, healthy circulation. You prevent the extra blood vessels from feeding cancers. What are some of these foods? Tomatoes. Tomatoes contain a bioactive natural chemical called lycopene. 
and clinical studies have shown that tomatoes can reduce the risk of prostate cancer. Prostate cancer requires a blood vessel blood supply in order to grow to become a problem. That men who eat two to three servings of cooked tomatoes, tomato sauce, two to three times a week, actually have a 30% lower risk of developing prostate cancer. Why? Because the bioactive in the tomato sauce prevents the blood tumors from recruiting those blood vessels. Now, with men that do develop prostate cancers, the more tomato sauce you eat, the less aggressive the prostate cancer actually is. So this has been studied, by the way, in 30,000 men. This is like a human study, not just a theoretical study. Another anti-angiogenic cancer-starving food, soy. Now, there's an urban legend that soy actually causes breast cancer is a risk. Completely wrong urban legend. Soy has contained phytosterols, which the, does have a plant estrogen, which looks nothing like human estrogen, blocks human estrogen. It's like a Mother Nature's tamoxifen. And studies have actually shown that eating soy lowers the risk of the danger of breast cancer. And in fact, it improves survival in women who actually have breast cancer. If you've got breast cancer or you're at risk for breast cancer, the more soy you eat, the lower your risk is, the better your survival. So other foods, black raspberries, cacao. I, I actually studied um, the chocolate uh, that was used to make this, and we actually found that it kills leukemia cells and lymphoma cells. So dark chocolate also cuts off the blood supply of eating cancer. Pomegranate juice, um, green tea. I wanted to show you this. I, I, I'm actually rarely found without a cup of green tea around. This is a whole leaf green tea, but you can use matcha. You can use iced tea works as well as hot tea. I tell a story in my book. I had a great uncle that lived to 104 and he lived at the base of a tea mountain and every single day he drank like six cups of green tea and stayed very physically active walking up the hills and trails uh, as well. Um, green tea, by the way, has been shown to reduce the risk of colon cancer. Why? Because the polyphenols in green tea cut off the blood supply um, feeding cancers. Now, you know, one of the things that um, I've been studying is how much do you need to eat in order to get the... I want to show you. Blueberries are anti-androgenic. I had some this morning for breakfast. Some of my favorites uh, love blueberries. The color blueberries is called by anth is made by anthocyanins, a natural dye. One cup a week has been shown in human studies to fight breast cancer. Okay, uh, also boost your immune system. Black raspberries. You need a little bit more if you are fighting bladder cancer. Seven cups a day of black raspberries can fight breast uh, bladder cancer. But if you're trying to fight cardiovascular disease, it can also improve heart health as well. And you only need four individual berries a day. So again, food doses is something really cool that we're working on. Walnuts. Now, walnuts have been shown to help improve outcomes for colon cancer. Okay, if, you've got, if you're fighting colon cancer, how do you actually lower, um, uh, how do you improve your odds? How do you fight colon cancer better? Nuts contain fiber, which feeds your gut microbiome, is also anti-drogenic. Turns out you need only 11 walnuts per week, 22 halves of walnuts. So think about that. You're watching Netflix and you're snacking on walnuts. If you have 22 of them over the course of a week, that's easy to do. That's, you know, just a, a three of them a day, three halves a day. Um, that actually is a dose that's been effective, uh, shown effective through studies, human studies for colon cancers.